Judging by some of the questions that I got <coughs> from you guys uh, last class, uh, some of you guys are still struggling with the idea of uh, objects. Uh, number one, I, I don't blame you because it's it's <laughs> it is very confusing, and I certainly I I, I certainly struggled with it for uh, for quite a long time. Uh, and the whole idea of the objects in computer programming it's even harder to understand because uh, a lot of times these objects they're not tangible objects that you can see and feel not like the objects that we have in in real life and the ones that we use as an example in class like a cell phone a camera a pen or pencil uh, uh, why not okay so I'm gonna work on this one and see if I can give you guys a, a little bit better of an understanding of what objects are okay so once again objects in real life perform certain functions for us they have a certain behaviors and we use those behaviors to accomplish to accomplish a problem objects also have properties they you can describe them by their color their shape their whether it's a pen or a pencil or a felt pen um, and those objects uh, and, and they have values okay so uh, a, a property would be type Okay, and a value would be uh, it's a pen or it's a pencil or whatnot and we use a combination of different objects to achieve a specific task so let's say you know let's say the task is to write a science report well we need various objects we need a paper object a pencil object we need uh, you know we might need a, a computer object we might need a camera object okay and we combine the functionality or behaviors of those to, to achieve the task that we want now keep in mind that computer programming is used to solve uh, human problems so what we try to do we, we try to model computer programs like we would um, uh, like human problem you know like a, uh, we try to solve problems in, com in, uh, in computer programming like we would solve them in real life by combining the functionality of different objects now there's a lot more advantages of um, computer pro using object oriented programming then um, you know then uh, then I can give you by example but we'll get into more of that later so let's get started so the first part here is to think about what objects are needed to accomplish the task okay so get a pen and paper and answer the following questions what properties and behaviors will, will behaviors will be associated with this with this property sorry this is a, a typo with, with this object and use UML diagram. So let's do that. Okay. So first of all, what objects do we need to accomplish this task? Now I'm not going to use the uh, guessing game. I'm actually going to use. Uh, I wouldn't call it a similar game, but it is a simple game. I'm going to use tic tac toe as the example. Okay. Okay. Now the first step in uh, in doing this uh, step one is actually you need to have a full understanding of what the program is 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 doing and how it's going to work. You need a full understanding of the game that you can program or the task that you're doing. So in this case here, uh, it's pretty easy. You know, you get three in a row. You know, one person goes and the next person goes, and anytime you get three in a row, that's that's when they win the game. There's a there's a nine there's a, a three by three grid, and there are two kind of characters. I guess there's an X and an O. Okay, um, and that's tic tac toe. So you can in this game you're continuously looking for three in a row, and there are uh, there must be two players. So there, I have a good understanding of the game. Now we can start to think about what objects I need to do it, uh, what objects I need to um, to accomplish this task. The first object that I need, uh, actually I'm going to do uh, two objects and I'm going to create two classes from those objects. Okay. So the first object I think I might need is a game object. Okay, the game object is going to define the grid. It's going to draw the three by three grid and it's going to define it. So this would be, you know, if this is a y-axis here and this is x-axis here, so this this would be x equals zero, y equals three. This would be zero zero, or this would be one one. Okay, and this would be y equals one, x equals three. So I need a game object. And um, and those are my behaviors. Okay, it's going to uh, draw the graph, and it's going to be able to identify each one. So I'm going to use my UML diagrams to do that. So I'm going to call this one game. So here's my UML diagram. So in a UML diagram, 
uh, what we do is we put the class name up here we put the properties here but of course we don't put the values because we're not actually building the program so we just have properties and down here we put the behaviors so this one I'm gonna call this one uh, I'm gonna call this class grid alright that's a good that's a nice noun that describes the uh, class and then for the uh, properties I'm simply gonna put um, oops uh, for the properties, I'm going to put um, well. I need an X, okay, and then I need a Y, okay. So those are my properties. And for the behaviors, uh, well, it is going to do one thing, and um, I'm going to put here. It's going to draw the grid, so I'm going to put draw, and put uh, two brackets here. So that's my behavior, okay, and that's basically what it does. It, it draws it, it the behavior it can draw the grid and then it can identify the x and y okay so there's my simple class so when I declare a grid object and call it game one uh, it can draw the grid and uh, I can identify which one is which which grid is which okay so moving back to here now the next thing is um, now it seems that I might I might need two more objects, okay? I might need an X object and I might need an O object. But uh actually I'm gonna create one object. I'm gonna call this object um XO. <laughs> right? And the reason I'm gonna have one object instead of two objects, no, XO is not a good name. I'm gonna call this one uh character. Okay. And the reason why there's one character is because um or because the reason why there's one class, okay, is, um, instead of two different classes, one for X, one for O, because they're exactly the same. They do exactly the same thing. They have exactly the same functions and properties. They just look different. That's all. So I can accommodate that with basically just just one class. So basically, it's going to be the same object, okay, but one property will be different. One will be shaped like an X. One will be shaped like an O. Simple as that. I don't need two different classes for this. All right. It's just like in Pac-Man. Um, well, there was one class, okay, for all the ghosts. Even though the four different ghosts, they look different, but there's one class for them. I mean, it, it, the only difference with Pac-Man is the ghosts are shaped the same. But in this case, the shapes are different. But what's the big deal? It's mm -hmm. just a property. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna duplicate my UML diagram. Okay, so here's my second UML diagram. Uh, so again, the class name goes here, and the properties for that class go here, but not values, because values is something we deal with, with the, in the main program, and the behaviors go here. Okay, so the property is going to be, or sorry, the class name, I'm going to call this character. All right, hang on. Okay, so I'm going to call this class uh, character. All right, and uh, in calling this class character, now looking at this, the character is going to have uh, well, f well, what are some of the properties that a character can do? Well, you know, uh, a character has an x and y location as well. Okay. So in character, I'm going to go, uh, it needs an X, okay, and it needs a Y, oops, alright, it needs an X, and it needs a Y property, alright, and what I also need to do with the character is I need to draw it, G, R, A, W, okay, I need to draw, draw the character, just like I need to draw the grid. Okay, so here here's my object for character. Here's my uh, here's my draw. Uh, here's my uh, so here sorry here's my class name's character. Here's the properties and here's draw. Now, first thing I want to notice here, and th and here's one of the reasons for using a UML diagram. Uh, <laughs> both my classes have the exact same properties and the exact same draw. Now that's kind of you know it's kind of weird. And and looking at this, I'm thinking, well, why does a grid need to have the x and y variable? Because when I draw the grid, when the computer program is draw the grid, well, it doesn't really need to know the x and y value, right? It doesn't need to know that at all. So actually, in, in this case here, uh, I could probably 
you know, I could probably get rid of this x and y value, all right? So, um, and the reason I can get rid of that is because the x and y value uh, is associated with a character, okay? Not, not really the grid, okay? It's a character we, it's each, listen carefully, it's each character object, okay, that we need to know where the where the x y location is so we can so we so we can uh you know so we can um find out if anyone's winning the game we don't really need to know where the grid x and y is so I'm gonna erase it there so i don't so i erase it it's not there anymore i i still need to draw both both the grid and the character ones but it's only the character x and y that i need to know okay so using the UML diagrams, I can kind of see all my classes. I can create new classes, and I can see how they all are going to interact with each other. I can see the names of the very the properties I'm choosing. I can see the names of the uh, behaviors that I'm choosing. Okay, and what I can do is when I look at my my product, when I look at my game, what I want to do, and I decide to myself, well, um, there's something else. There's more behaviors I want to add. Okay, there's more functionality I want to add. And then what you could, I could do is I could run back to my UML diagram. I can see this all my UML diagrams in one page, okay? And I can uh, I can start to plan out well where would I put that functionality? Should I put it? Should I include it with part of the class, or should I uh, should I start a new class, or uh, where should I put it? Where should it go? Uh, and actually, uh, I don't know. I guess some people do it online, but um, as far as I know, uh, most people when they draw UML diagrams, they're actually drawn in pen and paper or on whiteboard. Okay, so you can have like a they got a lot of space, and you can see all the all the the entire diagram. So I'll give you a small example. So in this case here, uh, in the in this game here, there's got to be some kind of um, artificial intelligence AI, uh, something to compare. Uh, the AI needs to know that well, you know, if the next move is O, it's better to put the O here than to put the O there. Okay. And uh, maybe the AI is also able to continuously check for um, check for um, the winning, you know, uh, who won the game. Or maybe those two functions should be different. So the engine that's used to uh, the artificial intelligence, the thinking engine, is maybe a different function than one that checks if the game is over or not. Okay. So um, now, if I have um, a function and uh, uh, I'm gonna call the behavior is the game o is game over. So that function is game over returns true if it finds three in a row, or returns false if 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 not. So now where can it go? Would it go in a character? Or will it go in a grid? Now using the UML diagrams, I can decide that. Well, I think it should go in a grid. So I'm gonna add that right here. Okay, I'm gonna call this is game over, right? And I'm gonna go boolean. Okay, because it's either going to be true or it's going to be false. All right. And the next functionality, the artificial intelligence, the one that decides, um, the one that decides um, where the next character should go. Now, should it be in the in the in the grid function or should it be character? Now, to me, it should it shouldn't go in either. I don't think it belongs in grid nor character. So I'm going to create a third UML diagram. And I'm going to stick it in there. So I'm actually not going to do it, but that's how you, you you would use a UML diagram as a planning tool before you start uh, developing a program. Pretty fancy stuff.